Hey class, Caleb Reynolds in here. Uh, this is my persuasive speech. We're going to be discussing abortion, or as I like to call it, genocide of the unborn. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the history of abortion in America, it has likely always been performed throughout the entire uh, history of the United States, though only since 1973 has abortion been legal. In 1973, the United States Supreme Court heard and decided the case of Roe v. Wade, and in doing so, they legalized abortion. Since that time, in 1973, 54,559,615, again, I'll repeat that number, 54,559,615 abortions have been performed in the United States, and that's since 1973. That's nearly 55 million innocent lives that never had a chance to breathe their first uh, breath. Um, and those lives could have been anything. Uh, doctors, teachers, lawyers, mommies and daddies, pastors, missionaries, uh, you name it, the possibilities are endless. Those children were never given a chance to uh, live and enjoy the lives God had destined for them. Uh, I'd like to share with you some of the abortion methods that are used by physicians today. Uh, it can be somewhat disturbing, so I apologize if it's offensive or upsetting. Uh, I know it, it upsets me greatly uh, knowing how these poor innocent babies are uh, aborted. So when the child is young enough and undeveloped enough, they will use a suction device that essentially just sucks the child in the placenta right out of the mother's womb and destroys uh, the baby. Uh, when the baby gets a bit more developed, that technique can't be used. So what they do is they attach sharp metal objects to the end of the suction tube and those metal objects cut the baby up so that it can be sucked out uh, through the suction device. Another method they'll use is um, injecting high doses of uh, saline. Saline is just a uh, salt water uh, mixture. Uh, they'll inject high doses of that into the placenta and that terminates the uh, baby's life as well. Uh, the most horrific uh, that I've come across is um, the evacuation and uh, dilation method where they take a pair of forceps and the doctor goes in and crushes the head, the spine, and most of the bones in the baby's body uh, so that it can be removed from the mother's womb. Obviously it's grotesque and barbaric, heartbreaking, uh, and it's something that shouldn't happen in America and I can't believe happens in America. Uh, so I would encourage all of you to take a stand against abortion. Use the voice God gave you. Use your rights as Americans to take a stand uh, by whatever means you find appropriate, whether it be petitions or peaceful protests, writing your congressman, um, social media. There's so many avenues to get the word out and take a stand against it. It may take a while for any results to happen, but with determination, uh, I know we can accomplish the end of abortion. Uh, as Christians and students at a Christian Baptist University, we are held to the highest standard, that is God's standard, and held accountable to His Word. So I'd like to leave you with these thoughts. Um, I, I want to share with you some scripture. It's in Psalms, um, and it talks about the sanctity of, sanctity of life and God's view on life. Um, so I'm going to be sharing with you from the NIV version. It's Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. So here we go, uh, starting in verse 13. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So I want to leave you with that. Uh, I hope that you would meditate on it, think about it, 
and really take a stand. Use the voice that you have to end abortion. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.